be patient. But be prepared. For what? Choosing between being the man that people need you to be. Or the father that your son needs you to be. What do you mean by that? You and I walk between two worlds. But we can only do that for so long. Hey everybody, Arrow's back, dropping bombs, big belly burger for everyone. So there's a new round of the Justice League ticket giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber, leave a comment on this video. Just careful for spoilers if you haven't seen the episode yet. So I'll explain what's going on with Deathstroke, we found out who died on the island, and we got our first big teaser for some of the big villain stuff that's going on in the background. But just like on The Flash, they're easing into their big villains, so Richard Dragon and Michael Emerson are like the two really big villains they're bringing on the show. But even though we didn't see them in the episode, I think we got a little teaser for one of them at the end. But let's do top 10 WTF and comic book easter eggs. So number 10, we're six months into the future, but they flash back to show you what happened on the island. So everybody pretty much got away. We actually got an inkling from the flash. They said Cisco got help from Curtis and Felicity getting Barry out of the speed force. So we knew that they would survive. But the big question I think was Thea and Samantha. So we got the answer that Samantha is the person who died and that's why William is with Oliver in present day. It's been in all the promos for a while now. So I don't think it's a big surprise that Samantha's dead. The bigger thing is what's going on with Thea and that actually has something to do with Roy's character. So number nine, because the actress, Willa Holland, who plays Thea, wanted to do fewer episodes this season, they had to find a creative way to write her out of the show. So putting her in a coma was their way of doing that. I think she'll come out of that when either Roy comes back on the show, which he will this season, or the mid-season finale, whichever of those events happens sooner. So when they said she'd be in fewer episodes, that doesn't mean like one or two episodes. That just means like half the normal amount. And they do 23 episodes a season. So she'll probably ride the bench in present day. But they did say number eight, even though flashbacks are over on Arrow, they'd still be doing flashbacks. I know it sounds kind of funny. So if you remember how flashbacks used to work, the only change now is that other characters will get flashbacks when they're relevant for whatever their story is in the episode. So they said there'd be Thea flashbacks. There's going to be some Deathstroke flashbacks because when he comes back, they'll tell his origin story. I'll explain that in a second, but it'll just allow them to have a little bit more fun. But number seven, so in the flashbacks, we find out why everyone's so messed up in present day. Quentin's been messed up for a while now. So we find out that he actually tried to kill Black Siren to protect Black Canary. And if he wasn't already staring down the barrel of a gun, thinking about drinking himself to death over the death of his real daughter, Earth One Lord, Black Siren coming back just completely twisted him up and then he shot her. So that's why he looks like he's about ready to die when you first see him in that bar staring at the shot glasses. All the dialogue is great too. I feel like the writing in this episode and the way they shot it was totally on point. When you rewatch the episode, look at how they start moving the camera faster and faster through scenes to build tension while the shit starts to hit the fan. So it just feels like they're firing on all cylinders. It just feels like a much better show starting off in episode one. But speaking of which, number six, almost everybody gets costume upgrades. And the most interesting one, yes, the T-spheres are really cool. They're getting much closer to comic book T-spheres. I wonder if he'll ever fly on them at any point. If Arrow goes to 10 seasons, maybe we'll see that in season 10. But look at Wild Dog's new costume. Whose costume does that remind you of now? So obviously it looks a lot cooler than his costume last season. But it almost looks like he's Vigilante. Like, was anybody confused the first time you saw him? You're like, oh my god, is that Vigilante? But then you hear his voice speak and you're like, oh no, it's Wild Dog. That feels like it's on purpose. They want you to visually associate him with Vigilante. And they did confirm that Vigilante is a male character. And everybody on Team Arrow has sort of a nemesis this season. Like, Black Canary has Black Siren. It feels like Wild Dog's nemesis is going to be Vigilante. Because both of their special thing is guns. But that was just something that really stood out in the episode to me. Just the fact that he looks so much like Vigilante now. Number five, Race of the Maid is back. If you don't remember her, she was actually in the pilot episode and then we never saw her again. So presumably Oliver needed help raising William when he was out doing Vigilante and Mayor stuff. So she's sort of filling in the gaps. He's having nightmares about the bad man. And every single time they have a scene together for the first half of the episode or so, William makes Oliver cry by saying something, not trying to be mean, but being totally honest. 
the bad man is the reason my mother is dead. Who's the bad man, William? And he just points at Oliver, and you can see tears streaming down Stephen Amell's face. But there are a couple Easter eggs in his scenes. As much of a bummer as this is, he kind of wins him over by the end of the episode. But the thing is, is that he's playing a video game, and I think it's Injustice 2. He might be playing as Poison Ivy there. And then you remember that he's a big fan of the Flash and Green Arrow. Maybe not so much the Green Arrow anymore, but he has his Flash backpack. So maybe when we get to the Fortnite crossover, Oliver will introduce him to Barry. Because William knows about the Flash, but he doesn't know that Barry is the Flash. So that just feels like a really easy way for Oliver to win cool dad points with him. Number four was Black Siren just blowing everything up. So you have the bunker fight. Then you have the police station. And Mark Guggenheim behind the scenes said that there was a set that they used a lot that was getting too noisy for them to film on because of construction that was happening around it. So right off the bat, I assumed he was talking about the island, but they had already made plans to move away from the island just because they'd done it for five seasons. So it's like, okay, we need to get away from Leanne Yu. But he said that because they couldn't use this set that they were going to blow it up during the episode. So I guess he was talking about the police station. For a minute, I thought he might be talking about the Arrow Cave. But they spent so much money building that set that I was like, there's no way they can blow it all up. And by the end of the episode, they sort of confirmed that theory. They didn't completely destroy the bunker. But number three, they do find out that Black Siren stole an experimental T-sphere for what they have no idea. They play it in a really vague way, like what can the T-Spheres do? What will she use it for? Well, it can do just about anything. So I think she stole it for either Richard Dragon or Michael Emerson, the bigger villains of the season. The thing about Michael Emerson's character is they said he wouldn't be a physical threat to Oliver and Team Arrow, but he would feel somewhat unbeatable. So it sounds like he'll be a more devious, techno-based villain, which is why I think number two, the big WTF at the end of the episode, people supposedly learning that Oliver is the Green Arrow, them outing him on the news, was something that Michael Emerson's character did. Now, it could be Richard Dragon, but Richard Dragon feels like more of a punch-you-in-the-face type of villain. Using secret surveillance information to out Oliver's identity to the public feels like something that Michael Emerson would probably do. And the sort of sidebar to that, too, is that someone seems like they resurrect Black Siren. Like, she really was dead there on the floor, and somebody touches her, and she just wakes up. So either this new character, who is either Michael Emerson or Richard Dragon, has powers of resurrection or some technology that just helped bring her back from the edge of death. So I'm not so sure that they're going straight back to resurrection. There's probably some other twist because they got rid of the Lazarus pit because they didn't want that easy out. Like, oh, we can just dip this dead person in the Lazarus pit. We'll bring them back. So there's probably some other explanation for this scene here. But my number one is Destro. So he finds out where Jericho is. He's going away. He'll come back in episodes five and six. They'll tell his origin story. You'll learn what happened to him before Leanne Yu and how he wound up on the island and a little bit more about his family. So we might get to see his wife, Adeline Kane. We might get to see his other children. Rose Wilson isn't a character on the show right now, but he does have that older son, Grant Wilson, that showed up on Legends of Tomorrow in that alternate timeline future. So we'll see how they play it, but they've already released some footage of that. This is what he looks like. So let me know in the comments, what did you guys think of the episode? There was some dialogue that I couldn't quite hear, so I may have missed a couple of the Easter eggs. The only other one that I haven't mentioned yet was the joke about Oliver running for governor, which I think is a joke about The Wire. Because if you didn't watch that show, the mayor, who was actually played by Aidan Gillen, who's a little finger on Game of Thrones, eventually ended up running for governor and winning. So I'm not actually expecting Oliver to ever run for governor. And they also name dropped Tommy. Tommy was my friend. He helped me fit in. I would hardly call having a friend who helped you get into trouble fitting in. But I like what they're doing with the father-son storylines. You have Oliver and William. You have Renee and his daughter. You have Slade and his son. So the rewards of the season are very clear. Like Oliver's reward will be William winning him over and having a real family, a real relationship with him. But what'll happen is, is they're dropping the trailer for Marvel's New Mutants movie at midnight tonight. So that'll be my next video. I'll try to post that as fast as possible. And then later in the morning on Friday, Stranger Things is dropping its final trailer. So those will be the next videos. But I'm doing a DC TV Q&A for Flash, Arrow, anything else you guys want to ask me from the DC TV show. So just leave all those questions in the comments. That'll post on Saturday. I'll announce the giveaway winner when I post that. While you wait for everything, you can click here for footage from the next Flash episode, and you can click here for my new Star Wars video. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.